to my channel. For those of you who haven't watched yet, my name is Erica and I am pregnant. I'm so excited. Um, so I am doing pregnancy updates and right now I'm kind of backtracking because I'm actually in my second trimester. Um, I was super sick during my first trimester and so I'm going back and catching you guys up because I took notes on each week as I've gone along so that I could do these even though I wasn't able to at the time. So we are just working on getting you guys caught up. I'm doing a couple weeks at a time. So I didn't really know if I should include week three because it was kind of in between me finding out I'm pregnant and kind of before I got any new symptoms. So it's kind of a mesh between my symptoms I had before a positive test slash some of these symptoms that I'm going over. But most of these really started on week four. So today's video is gonna be week four and five of pregnancy. So the first thing that like my friend asked me and George asked me, they were like the only ones that knew at this point, um, was are you having any cravings yet? And honestly, cravings didn't set in for a really, really long time, but what I did notice almost right off the bat is food aversions. I just didn't want so many things, and it was never really something specific that I did not want. It was more so just random, just something would sound either okay to me, like I can eat it, or it would sound like the worst thing ever that would make me throw up. Um, and so nothing really sounded good, but some of the stuff that I was able to eat, even though it didn't sound super great, like it was tolerable to me. I'll go over a list of like some of those things and some of them like I crave, like some of them were good um, and I really want it. So I'll just make note of that. So the one thing that I did actually, I would say crave was a peanut butter banana smoothie and I've had peanut butter banana smoothies before in life and they were fine but it was never something that I would like ever create myself or ask for it would just be kind of like if someone happened to be making one I would enjoy one um, but I got to where I was making it every single day usually I would make it in the morning but if I for some reason didn't get it in the morning I would have to go back and make one at night because I needed it every day um, and I had I put frozen banana in there to give it like the texture and then big old scoop of peanut butter and then I used a little scoop of Tropica's Camu powder. Um, it's really good for your immune system and really high in vitamin C so I thought that would be good for keeping my immune system up. I also would put a little bit of Tropica's Ultra Cleanse powder in my smoothies just to get some greens in and keep things moving. And then for the liquid, I was kind of having trouble eating much and so I kind of wanted like an, a little extra like healthy fat and, and protein and stuff in there. I was really struggling to get enough food in my whole first trimester pretty much um, and I would add coconut milk in for the liquid and just blend that sucker up and it was so good. <laughs> I think I drank that, I have a note in here like when I stopped drinking it, it's like I wanted it every day and then all of a sudden. One day I was having one and I was like, this will be my last peanut butter banana smoothie of my pregnancy probably. <laughs> like I was like, this is it. I don't know what it is. And it wasn't bad to me that day. I just knew I was over it. It was odd. And it really was, it was my last one. I just, so usually I'd have the smoothie in the morning and then in the evening I would have an apple with salt. So, I mean, and I'm talking kind of late, like at bedtime, I would want an apple with salt on it. And it was so good to me. I like that little bit of salt and the sweet and the crunch and the juice. And I was like, whoo, apples with salt. So good. I love Honeycrisp apples. They're my favorite. And I also like Fuji. I'm kind of an apple snob. And those are the top two. I really was enjoying oranges still. So apples and oranges were my thing. Really early on, like that third and fourth week probably, I was um, on this weird thing where I just wanted toast with a little bit of butter on it. Just plain toast with a little bit of butter, which isn't something I've had probably since the fourth grade, but I just, that's what I wanted. So at this point, my morning sickness had not really started yet. Um, and so I did not know what I was in for, but I would notice that I would feel like more sluggish and kind of like, kind of nauseous and sick just around 4 p.m. usually. I didn't want to do anything. I was like, let me go lay down. Yeah. 
So my appetite went way down, like just really decreased appetite. And um, I didn't want any food, like nothing sounded good. This is like towards the end of week four that this got more extreme, that I just really didn't want anything. And then I would wait until I was so hungry that I felt really sick and like would feel nauseous. And then I would finally give it and have to eat something just to keep me going. And it was, it was a little rough, but I had no idea what was coming, so it was fun. But my skin was starting to get really dry, which has continued all the way till now. It's still happening. But this was before I started having like my aversion to water and I would drink like two and a half to three liters a day, which was really good. And actually when I went and had a follow up for my surgery, he said to drink like about three water, three liters of water a day. And so I was right on target with that, which was good. Um, but it definitely has tapered off during pregnancy because I just couldn't get it down. It would make me feel sick. I got this Burt's Bees Mama Bee body butter. I say it in quotes because it's just, it's like a cream more than a butter. It's not very thick, but it has shea butter and vitamin E. So I got that and I think it was like $13 and I used that all throughout my first trimester. And then in my second trimester, I switched to a body oil, LeBang oil, but it was really nice during the first trimester because it doesn't have much of a smell and I could not handle smells at that point. Something else I have written down for this week four of pregnancy is this is when I started my habit that still continues. I don't do it every night now, um, but it's still like at least a weekly occasion thing. But I, every single night, would sit in the bathtub and I would watch like birth vlogs on YouTube and just cry and just cry and cry. <laughs> and like George would come in, I'd be like in the bathtub, just hysteric, crying and just having a moment that this was gonna happen to me and I just couldn't believe it. I just, I still can't believe it, it's just crazy. So that was stuff from week four. We're gonna go ahead and go to week five and go over those symptoms real quick. Still wanted that same smoothie every single day. Constipation was just really a struggle at that point. Um, I think just the initial start of my hormones changing and my body changing really threw off my digestion and it took me a long time to get it back in check. Um, and we'll go over in other videos like what I did to do that, but that's kind of when the constipation stuff started. So my loss of appetite actually caused me to lose about five pounds. And when I looked it up, I learned that it totally wasn't a big deal. I kind of already knew it wasn't a big deal, but I needed to like read it from multiple sources just so I knew it was okay. Week five, I was still able to drink my two to three liters of water a day, which is really great. My breast tenderness and nipple tenderness increased this week. So before it was just like kind of that subtle tenderness and then it was like, whoo, they hurt. About mid week of my fifth week of pregnancy, is when I started experiencing all day nausea. This is when the morning sickness started. Um, it wasn't horrible at this point, but I just felt queasy all day. So that's it for my symptoms during weeks four and five. Um, one thing that I forgot to go over that I think would be useful is the prenatal vitamin that I was taking from the start of trying to conceive, like when I decided to start trying, until I think We'll have to see, I'll tell you in the video which week I switched. Um, but these are really, really good quality prenatals. It's just once I got to a certain point of morning sickness, morning sickness, um, I definitely had to switch because I just couldn't handle the capsules anymore. But it's the Vitamin Code Garden of Life Raw Prenatal, Raw Whole Food Multivitamin nutritional support for mom and baby. I got it on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. This was so good starting out um, for like trying to conceive and during that first part of pregnancy because I felt like it was just the best source I could get for prenatal vitamins. The only thing about this one is you have to supplement with your DHAs, your like fats and stuff. They're not in here. And so I got the Garden of Life Ocean's Mom and it's like 
DHAs and fats from ocean sources and you keep it refrigerated and I took that every day as well and I checked with my gynecologist on this and it has the right amount the right amounts of like folate and iron and all that stuff um, so you're good there and I'll show you the bottle so this is the bottle so I hope that helps you guys um, I would love to know what your symptoms were at this point and kind of compare notes so please leave in the comment down below so I hope to hear from you guys and I hope you'll follow along with this journey with me and please just like this video and subscribe to my channel to keep up with my pregnancy updates and this little baby growing. 